Hydroxychloroquine has been making the rounds on the news lately. It's a popular malaria drug that showed promise against COVID-19. Well, now we have results from the largest study ever done on that drug. Nine Headlock expert Dr. Paul Coley is here this morning to help break down that information. Good morning, Dr. Coley. So what did that study show us? Good morning, Natasha. So, so this is the largest study thus far to date, as you mentioned, and it's a study of 368 patients from the Veterans Affairs Hospital. So they were all male patients. And what the authors did is they divided them into three groups. So one is standard of care, patients that didn't get either medication, hydroxychloroquine or azithromycin. The second was the, the group that got both hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. And then the third was a group that just got hydroxychloroquine. And what they did is they counted up the time on the ventilator and the death rate. And there was no difference in people getting on the ventilator in any of those three groups. And what we found was actually quite alarming, which is that the death rate was significantly higher in the group that got hydroxychloroquine. So routine care was 11%, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin was 22%, and hydroxychloroquine alone was 28%. So people are actually dying more with getting hydroxychloroquine rather than those that didn't. And we do know that hydroxychloroquine has been associated with things like cardiac arrhythmias. Although we don't know the mechanism by which they were dying more, we suspect that this may have something to do with it. Wow, these results really shocking when we were possibly thinking this could have been a miracle drug. Uh, Dr. Coley, is it possible that the higher death rate with this drug was just by chance or that those patients were sicker? Um, you know, when we talk about studies and controls. Yeah, what a great question that is. So, so normally the highest quality data, and you've heard Dr. Fauci say this before, is randomized controlled trials, where you take an intervention and you, and, you, and you have a computer randomize the patient to getting the intervention or not getting it. And that gets rid of all the other statistical things by chance that could cause the results. In this case, this was not a randomized trial. It was a, what we call an observational study, where you basically just count up what happened to the people that did end up getting it and did not. And in in fact, in the study, it's true that the people that got hydroxychloroquine were sicker, and that's one of the reasons the doctors kind of reached for this medication. But they tried to use mathematical models to adjust away some of those differences, and they still found that that mortality difference existed. Mm -hmm. But the point you make is a good one, is that in these studies, there are limitations. Other limitations in the study were the fact that it was all male, that the median age was greater than 65, and this data was not peer reviewed. So in the era of COVID, we're trying to churn out the data as fast as we can for clinical use and sometimes we don't always get to peer review it which really is a good mm -hmm. review process to make sure that it's solid data. Mm -hmm. So where does this leave us with the drug? Should we even be using it against COVID-19? Yeah, uh, studies come out of Brazil and France as well with similar warnings about death signals. So we're really left to take a huge step backwards from the drug, really have some clinical equipoise. And at this point, there are some agencies that are recommending not using it, except in those extreme cases mm -hmm. for compassionate use. Certainly, it's not out there for prevention by any means. But even in the hospitalized patients, doctors are starting to pause and think about the risk benefit profile. Certainly eye-opening results. Dr. Coley, thanks for breaking that down for us and nice to see you.